Hey, it's Barrett from the Gimpy Camper. We're here today from Lake Raven Beach, a recreation area. It's part of the National Forest System. Um, our plans this week, we're actually going to Tallulah Falls, which we have another quick video coming out on just to show our experience there. Um, we just chose this campground because it was about you know, 20 minutes away from Tallulah Falls, and it was quite a bit cheaper uh, especially with my handicap discount than the Georgia State Park system. The campground host here did tell me that a lot of people do come here just to go over there. Um, he said that a lot of uh, reports that he's had is that the camping spaces there were a lot tighter together with uh, less seclusion, less privacy. Just driving by, I was going to try to go in there and take a look at it so I could tell you guys something about it. Um, but you know, they said there was a sign saying the camp campground was full, and there was a uh, uh, some cars stopped there. So I didn't didn't venture in there, but just by driving by, it did appear that the spaces were pretty close together in there. But I can't really tell you one way or the other. And so, you know, I'm here to give you this review on Lake Raven Beach. Um, basically, I'm going to give you the meat and potatoes of the review. I'm going to try to make these videos a little bit shorter because I know that uh, according to YouTube nobody makes it more than a few minutes so um, I'm actually gonna post the time here at the end for just like pictures and stuff if you want to skip to that part or if you're interested in coming and you want to see what it's all about and uh, see the best spots and s stick around now um, you know this is a pretty area there is a, a beach area that's just down the road had some sand um, also had like a little floating dock out there that you know kids can get on and jump off of that kind of thing of course it's um, mid-october now it's finally cooling off around here we actually had to use the heater a little bit last night and so you know we didn't go swimming of course but it'd be nice in the summertime uh, they did say that here in a couple weeks they are closing for the season I gotta say boo on that. I don't understand places like here in the south that close for the winter time. You know, I camp all year long. I camped all year long before I even had a camper. Uh, I like it more in the winter time. Um, granted, we don't have a lot of snow and stuff down here in Tennessee and Georgia, but I just like it more. And so in the fashion of our usual review, we'll start with some Verizon coverage for you. I will say that Verizon coverage over at the uh, Tallulah Falls area was four bars of LTE and here we got an average of one bar of LTE which was enough to do what I needed to do um, but sometimes we did have two bars and there was probably about 20-25% of the time we lost service completely um, you know that's kind of a hassle it would be a great opportunity um, you know if somebody had a range extender on their phone uh, or on the camper to, to hook up to their phone I'm sure that would um, make it where you didn't have any issues at all um, let's see what else we got for you we have of course our site recommendations um, you know we're first I want to say that this loop uh, the GPS put, put it in the wrong spot I actually passed the loop before I realized that I did. I saw it, but I thought it was more of an exit because I didn't see it clearly marked. It was dark when I came in. And so just be mindful of that. Right by loop two here, I didn't even see loop one unless they're together here somewhere. But at loop two, there is a mailbox right beside the, the driveway. Um, and when you come in, you know, there is a gate. They said that they do close the gates after 10. Uh, but it is unlocked so you can open it and get in and out if you need to and so There I also have to talk about the campground hosts. The hosts here were great um, One of them came over said that they uh, did some bluegrass picking on Saturday nights if we wanted to go over last night um, you know more kind of Private people so we didn't do that, but we heard them. It's nice to hear the hear the music um you know one of the other campground campground hosts like i say it was dark when i pulled in he helped me back in i have backup lights on my trailer but i got to do a little tweak to that because i can't see the sides of the camper at night um 
And so, but the best sites that I saw around here uh, were sites 70 and 71, and those are right by the bathhouse. Uh, speaking of the bathhouse, there was a handicapped bathroom in there that was larger. Um, the shower that was in the men's room, it was kind of janky. I was really afraid when I used it, not like afraid for my life. Granted, to turn it on, it is an electrical switch, which was very strange. But there wasn't any way to control the water. So I was afraid that when I flipped the switch on, it was just going to be a cold water shower. It wasn't my... What I figure is that the switch is hooked to both like a water pump and like a tankless water heater that's just set to a certain temperature. Because it was comfortable after only a few seconds. But like I say, so best site 70, 71, 59, 57. 57's where we are here. It wasn't too hard to back into. A lot of these sites are great. A lot of them have woods if you're hammock camping. Um, you're not going to have trouble finding trees anywhere to put your hammock. But, you know, I would stay to this inner loop. There is, there was a spur. Um, on the spur, spur A it was called, the sites were smaller. There was a dead end back there too. Now you could probably turn most campers around because there is a, like a T area at the back where you can turn around. But I wouldn't want to be in that situation. And there's also on there, there was another loop, uh, loop B. And if you prefer like a lot of seclusion, then B47 was looked like a good site. Now the only word of caution about that, it is a loop you can get back out, but it is a narrow road. Um, but loop for, loop B47 seemed to be a good angle where you could get a camper back into it was pretty secluded um, and it you know like I say there wasn't a, a sharp harsh angle around the road right at that point or something where a lot of sites you have to worry about the angle being uh, hard to back your trailer into so uh, if you want to stick around and see some pictures of the area kind of see what's going on down here stick around a few minutes uh, if that's all you were wanting to know is what site's best. Um, I think I threw that out there for you. It is a nice area. I'd like to come back here sometime. Um, to be honest, it's a little further than we usually go on a weekend trip. This was about two and a half hours from home. Not that it was that far away, but it's all mountain roads. Um, going through, you know, from Southeast Tennessee, we live uh, more near the Chattanooga area. Then you had to go through Polk County um, and get on the uh, 64 highway there and go through North Carolina and just a lot of mountain roads. But it's a beautiful area. I like it here a lot. And I'll definitely not mark it off of my places to go in the future. You know, if you've not figured it out right now, every time we go camping, we usually go somewhere new so that we can find information to pass along to you, our viewers. But thanks for supporting us and have a good day. I'm going to give you guys a quick walkthrough through our campsite here. This is site 57, loop 2. The actual parking pad is rather small, uh, but there is plenty of space for the camper and a uh, vehicle in front of it before you get to the road here. And plenty of space over to the left as well. I'm going to walk around here. Let me show you what we got set up. We got our black stone with our uh, hose to our tank. Um, usually I set this folding table up here in front of the camper in order to cook on, but you know we did this quick because it was raining yesterday, so it reached to the table. It's 12 foot long. We've got our foldable rocking chairs with our uh, rug our solo stove we never leave home without and these couple of little fold-up tables seem to come in really handy as well as our uh, rope along the top here that's our trolley system for our dogs running a little bit behind today if I have enough time I'm going to do a review on that because I find it really neat and I've used it enough to actually talk about it now